This video is a long-awaited promise that I said I would make. The New York Giants have become the new laughingstock of the NFL. Which is weird because of how many Super Bowls the franchise have, and even some of the recent ones. The franchise has always been a stable one, and even when they slipped up a little, it didn't take long for them to get back into the race. But now with trading Odell, and drafting Daniel Jones, and not moving on from Eli Manning, the Giants are now in a complete downward spiral, and today I finally wanted to talk about it. The Giants have four NFL championships before the Super Bowl era, and then they also have four Super Bowls. That puts them on the second all-time list of teams with titles behind the Packers. Back in December 15th of 1982, Giants head coach Ray Perkins announced he would be leaving to replace Bear Bryant at Alabama, and defensive coordinator Bill Parcells would be taking over. Bill Parcells was truly a giant at heart, rooting for them as a kid, and now coaching them was a dream come true. When he took over for the Giants, he turned them into a postseason contender. He was the head coach from 1983 through 1990, and got the team to two Super Bowl wins in the 1986 season and the 1990 season. During his time as head coach, he had an impressive coaching tree. Some of the guys who were under him were Bill Belichick, who was arguably the best coach in NFL history, and Tom Coughlin, who I'll get into later in the video. When Parcells left after the 1990 season, the team went through three head coaches until the Tom Coughlin era. First was Ray Hanley, who was the coach of two seasons in 1991 and 1992 and didn't have a winning season. Then there was Dan Reeves, who was there from the 1993 through 1996 season, and he won coach of the year after his first season and got the team to the divisional round of the playoffs, but after his first season, he didn't make the playoffs again. And finally, there is Jim Fossil, whose tenure lasted from 1997 through 2003, and in his first season, he won coach of the year as well, but he only got the Giants to the playoffs three times. But the 2000 season was a great one for the franchise, because the Giants made it to the Super Bowl, but lost to the Ravens 34-7. But finally, Tom Coughlin was hired before the 2004 season, and this is where the video begins. Coughlin was with the Giants during the Parcells era before becoming the head coach at Boston College and then the expansion Jacksonville Jaguars. Coughlin had done some amazing things for the Jaguars before he was fired, and when he was fired, Giants had the fortunes of landing him. During the 2004 draft, the Giants were drafting fourth overall and traded their pick Phillip Rivers to the Chargers in exchange for number one overall pick Eli Manning. Eli had a quarterback competition with Kurt Warner who was recently released by the Rams. Warner started the season for the Giants and did well because the team went 5-2 and two in their first seven games. But then they lost two games in a row, and the Giants decided it was time for Eli to take over. Then the Giants only won one more game that season, and finished with a 6-10 and 10 record during the 2004 season. Then the 2005 season, the Giants went 11-5, and five, but lost 23-0 to the Panthers in the wildcard game. And in 2006, the Giants went 8-8 eight and, eight and lost to the Eagles in the wildcard game 23-20. But the 2007 season would go down as one of the biggest Cinderella stories ever. That season, the Giants played in and won the first ever NFL game that was not in North America when they beat the Dolphins in London. The Giants this season only lost one road game, and that is a huge reason why they ended up winning the Super Bowl. On the last game of the season for the Giants and the Patriots, they played and the Giants almost beat the Patriots who were 15-0 at the time, but they lost 38-35. In the playoffs, the Giants were a wildcard team, in the first round, they went and beat the Buccaneers 24-14. Then they beat the Cowboys 21-17 in the next round. And in the NFC Championship game, the Giants beat the Packers on the road 23-20. Now they had another matchup, but this time with the 18-0 Patriots in the Super Bowl. The Pats were a 12-point favorite entering the game and were on the verge of completing the greatest season in NFL history. But the Giants, with a little luck and an excellent game plan, beat the Patriots and won the Super Bowl. The 2008 season started out amazing for the Giants. They went 11-1 to open the season and went 12-4 to finish the year atop the NFC. But they lost to the Eagles in their playoff game and ended their season on a disappointing note. The 2009 season, the Giants had a really disappointing season where they finished 8-8 and were not able to make the playoffs. The 2010 season, the Giants moved into MetLife Stadium and things were looking good at first, but the Giants lost a critical game versus the Eagles where Deshaun Jackson returned a crazy punt for a touchdown to win it for the Eagles. The Giants finished 10-6, and, and so did the Eagles, but they had the tiebreaker, and the G-Men missed the playoffs. But the 2011 season would be another of the franchise's best, and would end in another Super Bowl victory. The year started off pretty well with a 6-2 record, and got a win at the Patriots. But then they went on a four-game losing streak, and were 6-6, six and six, and it looked like they were headed for another disappointing season. But they won three of their last four, which included a winner-go-home Week 17 matchup versus Dallas, and the Giants made the playoffs. During the playoffs, the Giants played the Falcons at home in the wild card, and won that game 24-2. Then in the divisional round, they played the Packers, who had only one loss that season, and had one of the best regular seasons in NFL history. But the Giants were always resilient in their Super Bowl runs, and they were not phased. The Giants won on the road versus the Packers by the score of 37-20, and Eli Manning played almost a perfect game. Then the Giants made the NFC Championship, and played the 49ers. This game went to overtime, and the Giants won on a field goal to get to the Super Bowl. And just like four years earlier, the Giants were once again facing the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And just like four years ago, the Giants beat the Patriots by the score of 21-17. But after that title, the Giants struggled to make the playoffs. The 2012 season, they finished with a 9-7 record and barely missed the playoffs. Then in the 2013 season, the Giants started off bad when they lost their first six games, 
but then went 7-3 the rest of the way, but that wasn't enough to get them into the playoffs, and this was their first losing season since 2004. But in the 2014 draft, the Giants were able to get star wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. 12th overall, and he was the big bright spot on the team while also winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. But the 2014 and 2015 seasons, the Giants went 6-10 both seasons, and before the 2016 season started, Tom Coughlin announced he was stepping down as head coach, and the Giants announced he would be replaced by Ben McAdoo. McAdoo was the team's offensive coordinator the previous two seasons, even though the team was not very good. And his first season as head coach was actually not that bad. The team went 11-5, but lost to the Packers 38-13 in the wildcard round. But after how well the 2016 season went for the Giants, it did not last. The 2017 season was just a complete and absolute mess. The team started out 0-5, and lost Odell Beckham Jr. to a season-ending injury in Week 5. They also lost their two other receivers in Brandon Marshall and Dwayne Harris, and basically their only receiver left was rookie tight end Evan Ingram. Then the team also lost their two cornerbacks Dominique rogers cromartie and Janoris Jenkins to suspension. But it gets better. Eli Manning was benched in week 13, and then after that, head coach Ben McAdoo was fired. And longtime general manager Jerry Reese, who was the GM during both Super Bowls, was also fired. Then the Giants finished with a 3-13 record. The 2018 season began with the hiring of new general manager Dave Gettleman, who was the GM of the Panthers from 2013 through 2017, and got them to Super Bowl 50. But he was then relieved of his duties by the Panthers, and the Giants brought him back in because he was with the franchise in the front office and scouting department from 1998 through 2012. This felt like a really good match from the day they hired him. The Panthers were competitive under his watch, and the Giants needed a spark. Dave then hired Pat Shermer as head coach, who was with the Browns for two seasons back in 2011 and 2012 as their head coach. Then he was also with the Eagles as offensive coordinator with Chip Kelly, and Vikings offensive coordinator during the 2017 season. During the 2018 draft, Gettleman and the Giants decided to skip on Eli Manning's replacement and went with star running back Saquon Barkley second overall. Saquon was an amazing pick, and he was always going to be great but the Giants were mocked for not taking a QB, and the team across the locker room in the Jets took Sam Darnold, who might be a great quarterback one day. The Giants started out the 2018 season with a 1-7 record, and finished with a 5-11 record. Saquon was amazing and won Offensive Rookie of the Year, but the quarterback position has not been fixed yet. And during the 2019 NFL Draft, the Giants selected 6 overall. And it looked like they would draft Wayne Haskins, or maybe pass on a QB altogether and wait for next year's QB-loaded draft, but they took Daniel Jones out of Duke. Do I think Daniel will be bad? No. But taking him at 6 was not expected at all. He did learn under a Manning favorite in Duke head coach David Cutcliffe, who was the offensive coordinator at Tennessee when Peyton Manning was there, and the head coach at Ole Miss when Eli Manning was there. So there was really a great familiarity there, and maybe this was the best spot for Daniel to go, because of the QB room and learning under Eli. So it is definitely not the worst case scenario people are making out to be. No one expects the Giants to be good this year, and I'm super curious how Daniel Jones will do when he gets in. But that is the quick story of the modern age New York Giants and their rise to the top of the NFL, and now their fall to the bottom. I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching.